Thank you, John. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is Anderson's TV. Uh, I am joined by the wonderful Digital John today. Digital John. We're talking about these new little toys from the lovely people at Victory Amplification. So, this time round, I think I shall tell you about things because um, whilst this is a sort of has a digital element to it, it is uh, largely old school analog. You'll be pleased to hear. So. Um, if you're familiar with uh, the guys at Victory, uh, they make guitar amplifiers and their range is kind of family based. So there's a Duchess family, which is that sort of American kind of um, inspired, perhaps clean, sort of hot rodded clean kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. There's the Sheriff range, which is um, a sort of a, a British uh, rock inspired um, range. Copper, which is more like the, again, British sort of AC inspired. Kraken, which is a, a high gain uh, inspired family of, of, of products. And then the Jack over there, which is, which is the sort of the Jack of all trades will do a little bit of everything. And this range uh, includes big valve amps and lunchbox amplifiers and preamp pedals and stuff like that. And more recently over the last year or so, they've been trying to sort of come up with, with this idea of a very small portable guitar amplifier. Um, and I think in 2022, this latest updated range has been launched. So it's the first time the whole family has come in this format, but even the, the Kraken and the Duchess that have appeared before have now got uh, a new uh, set of features on them. And I really think they've nailed this um, for the guitar player that wants something highly functional, highly portable and killer sounding. Absolutely. So, uh, across the whole range, these are the features that are all basically the same. Your guitar plugs into this, and the first thing that happens, it hits four genuine preamp tubes. So it has a, it has a really well-featured uh, preamp, tube preamp section. It then goes through, and this is new, um, a new circuit that Martin Kidd, the chief designer, has managed to design to sit in between the preamp and the power amp, which is this valve reaction uh, circuit, so that even though this is a class D power amplifier in here, it's emulating, uh, in an analog way, by the way, that kind of nice, saggy, soft sense that's very difficult to do with class D amplifiers that are, if I, honestly, <laughs> Oz, it's literally, you, you, you've, you've spoiled the flow now by the smutty humor. <laughs> Well, we, you call it sag, don't you? That kind yeah. of sense that when, when the signal hits the power amp, there's a little bit of a squidge. Chewiness. Chewiness, yeah. that's the word, which is, which is, I think, a downfall of a lot of Class D power amplifiers because they are typically quite a hard kind of efficient reaction to the signal going into them. So then it is a, a Class D power section, so you get this incredibly lightweight, outrageously loud, um, uh, very efficient power section here that... Uh, also now just needs a, a single mains transformer input and will run anywhere in the world regardless of whether you're on US mains or, or European mains or whatever. Um, obviously the controls and the tonality of each one is different based around the family but again back to the sort of the common parts of the back. So guitar goes in we have a, an effects loop and you can see on the, the uh, setup that we've got here I've got two drive pedals going in the front end delayed through the effects loop you can obviously do whatever you like here in terms of pedals. Mm -hmm. um, reverb's built in to each of these. Um, then we have uh, a regular speaker output. So that first bit you heard, we are just driving a 212 speaker behind us and miking it up in traditional old fashioned way. Or you have um, a cabinet simulated output and the guys at Victory have carried on their relationship with two notes. So if you're a two notes user, you're familiar with uh, their torpedo editor basically that's inside here so you can essentially uh, have an unlimited number of different irs to work with this if you want to six of which are storable within the device and then obviously if you've used this before there's a usb socket on the side you know you can have like a zillion mm -hmm. on your local pc um, there is a, that's on a three pin output there's also a, a balanced jack output where you can elect to either have the um, emulated output or if you don't want to emulate it because mm -hmm. you you know you don't need it Handy. Uh, that's that there is a separate foot switch so that this can either be used 
on the floor and you'd use this foot switch or you could have this on top of your cab or somewhere away and then you'd just use the normal, where is it, normal remote foot switch like a, an amp channel change foot switch. So we're going to have a little play around with all five of these. John's going to do the demonstrating. Um, what other cool features were there? The, 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 I quite like, there's a really handy um, 9 volt 500 milliamp uh, output on the back. So actually mm -hmm. this particular example we've got here, the Tube Screamer, the Protein Drive and the Digital Delay are actually all powering off of the Sheriff in the middle. Uh, there is a fan on here, you've probably seen that. The fan is uh, thermostatically controlled, so it will only come on if it feels the power amp is hitting a certain temperature. Uh, if you want to, you can elect to switch that off completely. Perhaps you're in the studio and you want something really silent, but do bear in mind that you then run the risk that the power amp in here, that has a, an automatic heat cutoff. Yeah. So uh, you probably can only run it with the fan off for a, a limited period of time, but if you need it to be completely silent, it can be. Um, what else is there to tell you? The because it's a class D power amplifier, it doesn't require a load. So you can use this just with the speaker attached if you want to, just with the two notes output attached if you want to, just the headphone output if you want it to. The headphone, right. by the way, also runs off of the emulated output. Uh, or you can do everything simultaneously. Yeah. So you can give the sound man the two notes output and run your own speaker on stage if you want to. In terms um, of size, it's just a bit deeper, isn't it, than the original V4s, right? Have you got one of them about? Yes, I yeah. will I will grab, uh, in fact, look at that. Oswaldo is passing me the preamp. If you just want the preamp section from here, so there is, this is the, the previous, fam not previous, this is the sort of the family that sits underneath. So for every one of these, there's a matching one of these. So this yeah. is just the preamp bits, no power amp, no two notes bit. But yeah, you're completely right. It's it's um, pretty small, right? Oh Considering... yeah, and not as wide, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you, Oz. Um, what else? These all have reverb in them, whereas the preamps don't. So let's get into it, man. Let's just <clears throat> get playing. Um, I kind of feel like, you know, if you take the feet off this, put it on a board, couple of pedals, it's an unbelievably compact fly rig yep. that will work anywhere in the world. So, okay, green light on the Sheriff is its vintage channel. Red light is its hot rodded channel. You don't need to know any more than that. That's what it is. So they'll both, you know, vintage will do a clean sound or go into drive depending on where you set it. So let's have a little play. Turn the delay off and we'll just use the reverb in here. <laughs> Let's just uh, gain up the vintage side a little bit and mm -hmm. see you. That should be quite touch sensitive now, sort of, you know. Yeah. Maybe your favorite sound is to chuck a tube screamer in front of a sort of an old Marshall amplifier. Uh, I mean, we chose the protein because I think it's got uh, like blues, you know, blues drivers and all kinds of, yeah. or uh, blues breakers, sorry, and all that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> Ah, it's great. And again, really of course, uh, it doesn't have to be loud. Um, 180 watts class D power amplifier sounds ridiculous. Uh, there is a reason for using the 180 watt um, power section, and that's because on class D amplifiers, you have to match the, 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 the amp to the speaker to get the maximum output. Right. So for those of you that know Ohm's law, you'll get your 180 watts into four ohms. 4 ohms is actually quite an unusual um, impedance to find a guitar cabinet at. Most guitar cabinets are 8 or 16, 16 ohms. Yeah. And every time you go 
from four to eight to 16, the power halves each time. Yeah. So 180 becomes 90 beca into eight ohms becomes 45-ish right. into 16 ohms. Yeah. Um, and I know in some of the early testing of these products on the previous models, using uh, either a 50 watt or a 100 watt class D module, it's fine into four ohms, but by the time you're into 16 ohms, you're down using some sort of 10 watt yeah, guitar right. amplifier, and, and then you've got a problem if you want to use it in a live professional kind of environment. Anywho, uh, back to here again. Let's try channel number two, which is the high gain hot rodded one. Cool. Volume. I've done that so many times. I know. I mean, so there's no digital modeling going on at all here. Yeah. Um, often people think that the D in class D stands for digital, uh, which it doesn't. It's just um, bizarrely, apparently power amp technology, just class A was the first and then someone invented oh. B and apparently C is used in something else. And D is just the latest. It's just a thing, but it's not. Damn uh, good. That's what D it for, for damn good. <laughs> Let's try a tube screamer over the top of that. There we go. Yeah, there's, there's, I said there's no modeling going on here. There's no, there's no noise gates. There's no nothing. It's, yeah. it's, it's an amp. I, the, yeah. That's what you kind of got to get your head around. It looks like a pedal. It looks like a big pedal, in fairness. But think of it as an amp. It's an amp. Um, what did I want to say? Oh, I tell you, right, we're going to go on to the, the, the cab sims now. So I'm just going to disconnect the speaker. Uh, so now all we're hearing in the room is the sound through the uh, little monitors that we've got here. Now, how's this for cool? I'm just going to tell you that you get with each of these um, products, uh, a pack of cab sims that are unique. They've been designed for each of That's these. Right. So it's a different six cab sims in each one. And I couldn't remember who they were, but the lovely people at Victory have just sent this through. So, uh, Rabir's done the cab sims for the Kraken. Chris Buck has done the cab sims for the Copper. Good stuff. Graham Coxon has done the cab sims for the Sheriff. Jack Gardner has done the sims for the Jack. And you heard it here first. Uh, Peter Honore has done the cab sims for the, um, that's Danish Pete for those of you that have never heard me use his surname, <laughs> has done the cab sims for the, the Duchess. Small names then, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's like, um, they've, they've really pulled out all the stops yeah. here. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna hear just the, the, the cab uh, sim emulated output. I'm gonna try and get through all five of these. So we're just gonna literally just do the first cab sim on each one and I'll show you both different sounds. Um, Cab sims, you know, will have been designed with lots of different settings and all that kind of stuff. So you, you know, you, you need to just tweak and find out where you like it. But we'll go through each one. You can you can hear so that you're now hearing just the XLR output into the desk. <coughs> Bit of cheap screamer. <laughs> um, I, obviously, you can use your effects and stuff, and it'll still yep. come out the, the, the thing. So. <laughs> So there you go. That's the sheriff. Um, 
the good news from your guys' point of view is there's nothing else for me to really tell you in terms of features on uh, each of these. It is now just down to you to decide uh, which one suits your you know, playing uh, palette the best. Uh, right, so any particular order? Should we just go left to right? Yeah, left to right. Cool. Right, okay, we're into the Kraken now. I have set the tube screamer up in the correct, um, you know, high gain, all the drive off, lots of level, <laughs> bit of extra tone, uh, but I haven't switched it on yet. So let's just do gain one on this. This is, by the way, you're sorry, you're hearing the, the speaker mic'd up again. One of my favorite things that the Rebeer does on the Kraken is get clean by taking the volume down. And it do, when you've got a, quite a high gain amp setting, but with very little signal going into it, it does this really epic kind of clean thing. But let's see if we can emulate a little bit of that. Channel two. Let's just show you what the emulated output sounds like on this again. I, I say apologies, I don't know what the, the cabs are, but this is just numero uno. With this yeah, one, very happy. I mean, whilst I'm changing stuff around, oh. talk about um, the feel because you you use um, lots of mm -hmm. um, products, you know, guitar floor effects type products all the time. Yeah. Do you kind of know what I mean about that sort of that 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 responsiveness that different technologies have when you're playing, and how sometimes it can be sort of off-putting to play something that doesn't feel natural to play. Yeah, I think in terms of this stuff from, you know, what I've played, and you know, in the past I have obviously played through real amps and stuff, but from playing stuff like this that really accentuates it, and because we've just come off of digital kit, it seems like the more you give, the more you get back, and that's really accentuated with this compared to, you know, digital kit. Um, and the low-end thump, obviously out of the cab, is a different thing to coming out studio monitors. Um, but, yeah. I don't know, how, how have you felt on the other end of it, not playing it? It just sounds like an amp to me. Right. I mean, I, I know I'm, you know, a dinosaur and all this kind of stuff, but, and I'm not, I get it, you know, everything has its place in the sense of, um, you know, I can completely understand why you might want to travel from one gig to the next with a USB stick. Yeah, you know, right. I completely get that. Um, but it, little things like, I love, I love that I'm not, I love that I'm not hearing a note decay and then I hear the background hiss come in oh, yeah, and then yeah. the background hiss get cut off when the noise yeah. gate kicks and all those little things that for me are just those telltale signs that, you know, you're, you're, you're plugged into. Yeah. It's very um, artifact free, isn't it? I sorry, guess. I'm turning things on and off without giving our sound man due warning. Um, 
But anyway, look, so here we are into the copper. It's the copper again, if, uh, I think that's the most recent addition to the, to the, uh, the Victory family. But yeah, inspired by um, a phenomenal, uh, you know, famous British amplifier. This one has a slightly, uh, although it's two channels, essentially one is what you're really doing now is engaging the top boost mode um rather than so it has its own separate master volume uh, but I, I think the gain structure is uh common to both channels just one has top boost okay. and one doesn't i think i'm saying that right apologies victory if i'm not um so we're going to go back to just hearing the cab again i mean that's the other thing that we've done in this demo which maybe isn't ideal um, we're using the same cabinet for all this. We're using a, a, oh. a cream back loaded two by 12, which probably suits maybe these two yeah, more than it might suit these. But hey, there you go. I just, you, you can use these with any cabinet that you like and, yep. and you know, match it as, as, as you see fit. Uh, so have we got a, a sort of a, a clean AC style? In fact, mm. should we change guitar again? We've gone full Chris Buck mode now. We've even chosen a Yamaha Red Star. Uh, no pressure, John. Yeah, at all. So, I mean, the Vox has a very, very characteristic bass end mm -hmm. when you ever hear an AC kind of amplifier. And, and it's weird, you know, I don't know what fixtures and fittings you can hear rattling away in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this, but the, the copper is very much a sort of like a hot rodded um, AC style mm -hmm. amp. So if we put some gain up here, we'd probably go straight into, you know, full Brian May sort of territory. Here we go. <laughs> it's those kinds of power chords I always yeah. think that sort of classic um, you know you, you get those classic kind of Queen style right. big fat sort of you know chordy mm -hmm. kind of riffs but anyway um, let's unplug the speaker and have a little quick listen to how it sounds through its uh, emulated outputs cool
I want to play chords down there with that sound. Yeah, I right. completely agree. I didn't use any pedals, by the way, with the, uh, the, the copper, apart from the delay from time to time. Um, let's go... It doesn't matter. Let's do Duchess yeah. next. Okay, so we're on to the Duchess now. The, the Duchess is a single channel amplifier, um, and so the switch on here engages the tremolo effect that's built in. Uh, and really, a, a, like a lot of old sort of classic um, amps of this ilk, uh, the way to get some gain. It is a master volume amplifier, so if you do want to, you know, chunk up the, the preamp channel, you absolutely can, or you use it with pedals. Uh, I, I kind of feel that, you know, the, the Duchess amplifiers are, I think they're the most popular amps that Victory sell, uh, and they're just, you know, people will buy them to use as pedal amplifiers, and I'm mm. sure this is where the, the Duchess V4 will end up being used the most as well. Uh, so let's start with um, the, plugged into the, the 212 down here, and away we go. In that style, we'll go tremolo. We can, of course, just, you know, who hasn't ever played like an old Fender-y sounding amp like that, chucked a tube screamer in front of it and gone. sounds great yeah, feels cool. uh, and lastly we're going to just show you a little bit of the, the the gain from in here one of the most underrated things i think about the duchess is this idea that you can just tonk it up a little bit and do everything from the volume control on your on your guitar again it's not a metal amplifier at all right. but it's you know this is uh, let's turn the delay off just a little bit of reverb i might chuck the tube screamer in to feel if it needs a bit extra but mo pretty much all the gain you're hearing now is coming from just having this preamp gain turned up yeah so, so volume around two ish yeah That's the Duchess. Um, let's hear it just through its emulation. -y. Uh... Bit of pedal in front of it, just to see so you can hear what it sounds like with some ganache. It's 
so much, oh, wrong one. I keep thinking I'm switching it off when I hit that, <laughs> but I'm not turning the tremolo on. There's so much headroom on these amplifiers, it's crazy. Tons, yeah. Lastly, the jack. Um, I always kind of feel that the, the uh, the, the, the Jack deserves a special mention. Uh, for those that are familiar with um, the history of Victory, uh, the first amp that really put them on the map was made for uh, Guthrie Govan. It was called a Countess, and it was designed to be a, a kind of a two-channel clean and dirty amplifier. And then about two years ago, as the family kind of started to grow, the name Countess didn't really mean anything mm -hmm. anymore. And so they changed the name to the Jack to be this idea that, you know, you'd have Marshall-y, Voxy, high gainy, Fender-y kind of vibe. And then the, the Jack would just be the Jack of all trades. Right. So we've got two channels on here, one very clean, one with almost that legato style of, of, of gain on it if you want it. Um, here we go, here's the clean tone into the cab still. how much ganache comes in here. Oh, I love and that. that's that's with the gain set at about 10 o'clock. So there's there's plenty more in the tank. So I've, al I've always felt with the, you know, there is a certain tone to that sort of legato style liquid kind of gain. It's not mm. too spiky at the top end. Right. It's very smooth sounding. So it's quite a different gain setting to something that you might get in a, I don't know, a Sheriff or something like that. But mm. keep playing with that and I'll chuck the tube screen over the top, bit of delay as well. <laughs> of chug where i think you you really hear it and feel it that it's going into a valve but you know they do a few of them yeah. yes <laughs> i love it this room goes nuts for that doesn't it yeah. i know it's like there's a lot of loose stuff right anyway so look uh, we're in the home straight, so let's have a little listen through the uh, speaker emulated <coughs> output and then we're all basically done. There's nothing left for me to tell you other than how much they cost, <laughs> which is coming soon. Uh, we got... Um, Clean channel, yeah? Yeah. And then here we go.
there we are. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the demo. Um, these are handmade in the UK. Uh, they are £799 each, including VAT, or whatever that, whatever that converts to in your local currency. Um, here's a bit of fun for you. Maybe these will be the super collectible ones in the day. Uh, I had to make a quick phone call to the chaps at Victory and gone, what is this panel, this secret panel that's screwed on at the back here? And they went, that's where the first 83 that were made had the wrong words on the back panel so the quickest thing to do was to write the right words on another bit of metal and then screw it over the top oh yeah this so one. yes <laughs> so uh have you got yes let yeah. me have this one the, the 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 back of most of them should look like what's on the duchess but if you get one of the mega rare unicorn ones in this hand here with the little thing on the back it means you got one of the first 83 ones lucky you uh, but yes that's what it does I, I thought oh is it hiding a special button underneath but it's not it's not. Um, Mr. John, I nearly called you Mr. Jack, but then I got confused. Mr. John, what is your overall impression of these in terms of uh, as a concept and to play and to hear? And have you got any questions? Well, top notch they are, first thing. So they're like Yoda for some reason. Top notch they are. Um, <laughs> they, they really are, though. Like, again, this is really the first time I've spent a lot of time with different Valve objects. Yeah. Like, in all seriousness as well. And um, they do have a thing that I get now. Like, I really do. Um, so the size of them means you could probably just bang them in a gig bag, right? So for people who use digital stuff like me quite a bit, is there any facility for me to use them with what I would use? Sort of. I mean, I don't think these were designed with this in mind, but, um, you know, thanks for the loaded question there, John, because we did prepare this beforehand. Uh, yes, it has an effects return. And like a lot of you know, guitar amplifiers, if you plug something in the effects return, you do go straight to the power amplifier and it does work. So if you, for example, uh, wanted to use this in conjunction with a Helix or, or um, whatever, really, for that matter, um, you could either run it as the four cable method. So you could essentially allow the, the preamp elements of this to be used within your, the, the, the um, the setup of your of your multi effects unit, yep. or if you really wanted something much simpler than that, you can just come out of the the output of your effects unit into the effects return. You do, in fairness, bypass everything now on the top of here. You're just mm -hmm. straight into the power amp, so you've just got to use the volume control on your device. Yeah, but yes, yeah. it'll give you a, essentially a 180 watt little power section to use with something like that if you wanted to. I mean, it's just tons, really. It's tons, and yeah. I suppose there is an argument that you know you've got products like the Seymour Duncan power stage out there, which um, is more dedicated to do just that. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously would save you a bit of money because you wouldn't be paying for all this other stuff on here. But as a sort of an added mm -hmm. bonus, if you really did want to just, you know, slam into the effects return, you could do that. I mean, for, for me, you know, as someone that completely gets the idea that you would want something very portable, yeah. um, and with the two notes output to perhaps give to a, a sound person to get like that consistent um, front of house sound every right. night. But that I just, you know, you know, you know, I, I struggle with, you know, you put a helix in front of me or something like that. And I'm slightly overwhelmed by mm -hmm. all of the options and everything. And so, you know, for me, I'm sort of going, well, if I could just have this as my amp and build my pedal board around it, you know, I don't mind having a pedal board that's maybe this big and I could have half a dozen pedals and, and this. Yeah. Um, I kind of, I love the idea that I appreciate if I've got six or seven pedals, particularly high draw ones, I'm not going to be able to use the, the nine volt output on here. I'll have mm -hmm. to have a separate supply for that. But for, I think that's, you know, I love that. And the idea of just, you know, bag in one hand, guitar in the other, boom, here you go. I'm ready to go. Plug into the house cab. Absolutely, yeah. Give the sound man the DI. Mm. And, you They're know. built like a tank as well. Yeah, so. I mean, you, you know, and you know, it's weird, isn't it? I, I know... I know from talking to the, you know, obviously I, I speak to Martin regularly and the guys at, at Victory and, and um, there was some debate as to should we make this as a pedal or should we just put it in a conventional looking amp head? Because I think the, the, their main concern was that people would see these and just go, oh, it's just a pedal. And it's obviously 
it's totally an amp. You know? yeah. It's like, um, yeah, they but, could sit on top of cabs. Easily. Yeah, maybe they'll do both in the future. Maybe yeah. you know you get to choose, but I, I don't know. But yeah, look, thank you for coming in, John. Thank you. Thank you for um, crossing the beams between analog and valve and digital. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a cool product, and it's good to hear. You know, you play all different styles of music to, to sort of show off each what they can do. But there you are. Uh, I believe these are released in April 2022 and the first, you know, ones will hit the stores around about the same time. So go check them out. They're very, very cool. Nice. Done. Yeah. All good. Right. See you guys next time. Thank you for tuning Cheers. in.